What is that? What is that? It's a gray Ruger box. It is indeed. What's inside this gray Ruger box? Well, obviously because you saw the thumbnail and you saw the title, you guys already know. So let's crack it open and get to it. Ruger P95, an oldie but a goodie, a classic, a absolute classic. I bought this from my local shop for a smoking deal. It's brand new in the box, unfired, and I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. A little digger out of here. Get everything out of the way. It does have everything that it originally would come with, the box, mag and the pistol. It's still got the little pink sticker on there. You know, the, the paperwork, the youth handgun thing, spent casing from test fire, your big obnoxious Ruger lock, and your extra mag. And then this is some type of a speed loader. I don't know how speedy it is, but they provide it. So there's that. And we'll get all this extra stuff out of the way. And we'll get to work. Now this isn't going to be a complete review or anything like that. More of an overview. I just got this and I have not yet had the chance to shoot it. But I'm very impressed with the build quality. I've known about these things for years. I've always been interested in them. I've seen them in the used cabinet before at my local shops plenty of times. They're always going for a decent price. This one I got an absolute steal on. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that, but it's literally brand new, unfired with all of the original accoutrements and, uh, I, it was highway robbery. What I got this thing for, I just, it's old school. I love it. I was, I had the, I have this thing where it's like every now and then I get the urge for a double action, single action handgun, you know, preferably a nine millimeter you know, it's, it's just old school, it's traditional, and they're usually built pretty well. You know, I like hammer-fired guns, you know, Glocks are great and all that, but there's just something about a, a hammer-fired gun. And yeah, sometimes the first double-action shot sucks, you gotta get used to it, but that single-action shot, every subsequent shot, is usually pretty nice. And uh, there's no exception to that rule with this guy right here. I like the way it looks, it's definitely a chunk definitely a chunky pistol but that added weight is not only going to help with recoil not that there's much with a nine millimeter to begin with but I, I don't know there's just something about it aesthetically you know it, you guys might take a look at this and, and say it's junk or it's ugly but it's old school and I love it and uh, just how beefy it is these guns the whole p-series line I think were the best semi-autos you know, in a center fire cartridge Ruger has ever made. You know, obviously they're making 1911s and stuff now, which are, are pretty decent from the for the money, from everything that I've seen. But as far as like a, you know, a double action, single action, or any other striker fired stuff, you know, polymer guns, any of that, this is definitely one of the best semi autos Ruger has ever put out. And it's built and overbuilt. These things are known for their extreme reliability, their extreme durability. They're just chunks, but they, they soak up the recoil. They shoot really nice. And uh, you can beat on them, man. They're tough. They're tough as nails. This one does have the rail on it. Some of them don't have a rail on it. Those are more rare. This is the more common version that does have the rail on it. It does have a polymer frame. Now, I, I forget is, uh, exactly what it's made out of. It's not necessarily a polymer. It's like a something fiber nylon reinforced whatever but it's supposed to be a very very durable polymer or a type of plastic or whatever it is um and it's been proven because these things are still around after all these years but if you notice the slide is riding directly on the polymer frame and there's no metal inserts on the rails they're straight polymer so it's polymer on steel and you know, by today's expectations, you'd sit there and be like, oh, that's not going to work. You're, it's going to shave it down. There's going to be problems. It's going to jam. It's going to break. It's going to crack. And they don't. Whatever this polymer is made out of is extremely strong, extremely durable, and uh, obviously reliable because it's been around for years. These guns have been around for years. I believe the last um, production run they made of these was in the early 2000s. And then, you know, they, they were put out of production, but... 
excellent gun, excellent gun. And again, I, I like the old schoolness about it. I like the feel in my hand. It's very ergonomic, even though it's kind of chunky. Uh, this texture and these ridges actually do provide some decent grip. You know, it's, it's not like a professional stipple job, but it is nice. You do notice that it doesn't sit the lowest in the hand, you know, compared to the Glock or anything like that, but it is hammer fired. And you will see that it's ambidextrous as far as the safety decocker. We got a 15 shot 9mm magazine, does come with two of them. I hate how Ruger does this with the stupid sticky things on them and then you try and peel them off and then they're all gunky and they get dirty and then it just looks stupid while it's on there and, but whatever, it is what it is. But nice metal magazines, quality magazines, these springs are, I mean, they're brand new, it hasn't been used. Um, speaking of the magazine, let's talk about the magazine release and uh, you'll see that. It is ambidextrous, which is nice and uh, kind of cool for the times because, you know, now all of a sudden it's, it's the bandwagon. Everyone's jumping on to have an ambidextrous pistol. This was, you know, made in the, in the 90s to the early 2000s, and this was already killing the game. Ambidextrous safety decocker and ambidextrous magazine released right out of the box. What's different about it, though, is instead of pushing it in, you push it forward. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get... Uh, I guess that'll be a good shot. You don't push it straight down. If you do that, nothing's going to happen. You actually have to push it forward. And then the magazine will pop out with authority, I might add. Um, very positive. Flies out of there. Really smooth going in there with the nice slick metal mag. It's a stainless mag too, so you don't have to worry too much about corrosion resistance. Obviously, take care of your stuff. Anti-tilt follower on the magazine as well. Here's your slide stop lever. Obviously, holds it open. Got a nice steel guide rod, nice stainless steel barrel. Very nice, very, very nice. Nice finish on the gun. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just just a type of bluing, but it's it's very uniform and there's there's no corrosion on it. It seems, you know, like it's durable. It's it's nice and even. It looks good. I like the way it looks on the gun. Take a look at our sights. You got just a standard three-dot arrangement, but they are steel, which is nice. You know, you buy a $600 Glock these days, it comes with plastic sights. You know, back in the day, I think these things weren't more than three, four hundred bucks, and, and just the quality that Ruger put into them, I mean, they're, they're awesome. You do notice that the hammer's back, so we'll hit the safety decocker. You will also notice that you'll see the red, so that's for fire. So, red, you're dead, right? Flip it down, white, you're all right. And so that does drop the hammer on a, on a live round safely, and then it puts it into safe. So if you wanted to fire this, you'd flip it off safe, and that first shot would be a double action pull. The double action is long, and it is somewhat heavy. It stacks a little bit towards the end of the pull right before it breaks, but it, it's relatively smooth. I also do like that the trigger is metal. You know, it, it's just, it's built well. It really is. So then after, after that first double action pull, gun's gonna cycle and the gun's gonna be in single action. And then there's your reset right there. Audible, tactile, and then a nice, clean, smooth, crisp break. I mean, it feels, feels like four or five pounds. Really nice, really, really nice. I like it, it fits the hand well. It's the perfect size. It's a little bit big for, for a 15 shot nine millimeter. We will bring the Glock into frame here. It's a little bit taller than the Glock. Um, the barrel is about as long. Definitely sits taller because of that bore axis. Um, and as far as the overall width, definitely a, a much wider gun for sure. But you do have that ambidextrous safety decocker and all that stuff to contend with, as well as the frame right here and the slide lock, slide stop, I should say, uh, juts out. But it's just like a 1911. It makes it very easy to drop the slide with your support hand doing a reload um, at slide lock. So I'm really impressed with it. Like I said, haven't shot it yet. I can't wait to do so. It's a really sweet looking gun. Again, I, I love the ergonomics on it. I love the features of it. I like how well built it is. You know, it, it's a piece of history, too. These guns are, you know, 
infamous for what they are. They just have such a good track record and, you know, they, they provide such a value. I highly suggest if you see one at a gun show or in the used cabinet at, at your local shop or whatever it is, a buddy's got when he's trying to get rid of it, buy it. The P90, the P95, the P89, they offer them in different calibers, different colors. Um, this The P95 is the only one that did have this polymer frame. All the rest of them are either steel or aluminum. But they're just excellent guns. Really, really excellent guns. I can't recommend them anymore. And uh, that's the video, guys. Thanks for watching.